Hi folks, this is Dr. Robert Sivis. I am the Carb Addiction Doc, and I'm going to try to keep my voice very calm. But of all the videos I've ever done, this is the one that pisses me off and that angers me the most. By far. But watch how calm I'm going to try to stay. I may, I may not hold it together. The commonest cause of death in the United States is what? Answer that quickly. The commonest cause of death in America by far, heart attacks, strokes. And heart attacks in this country are primarily caused, primarily caused by plaque in your blood vessels. So plumbing problems. And the two primary causes of that plaque, we can discuss this another, uh, another, uh, another time, are two molecules, two chemicals in elevated numbers. Number one, nicotine. Although that's fading, that's become number two. But that's where this all started. Nicotine. And number two, chronically elevated carbohydrate levels. Carbohydrates. Now, there is a... Uh, um, my friend uh, Ivor Cummins calls this the devil's triangle. It's carbohydrates, it's seed oils, the omega-6 fatty acids, inflammation, and some of the proteins that we consume. So it's that triangle, but without carbohydrates and without elevated blood sugar, we don't have that inflammation. That causes plaque to build up in our blood vessels in people who cannot clear the blood sugar. So if you look at your fattest people, your most obesogenic people, they are most likely to have the lowest CAC scores, zero being normal, where there's no plaque in your blood vessels. The leaner, earlier diabetics have the highest, highest level of plaque in their blood vessels. Correlates directly with your average blood sugar. And David Diamond has shown a beautiful study, uh, it'll be quoted in the show notes, where we can correlate in males and females an A1C, an average blood sugar of around 5.2, being normal when no plaque is gathering. In males, once you get to 5.5, in females above 5.7, you're doubling that risk, well before the diabetes of 6.5. So we're seeing that. And it's very important to understand that. So if the commonest cause of death in this country is a heart attack or a stroke, vascular disease, surely, like all other diseases, we should be screening for it. We're worried about colon cancer, so now the recommendations are to get colon, colonoscopy or colon colonoscopy at the age of 45 or even 49 susceptible people. So we've, we've moved that and appropriately so, move that screening test, an invasive screening test called a colonoscopy. You have to go to sleep for that darn thing. They shove up to you. I do it. I do a lot of colonoscopies and I've had my own. But colonoscopy, everybody would recommend it and they get angry with you if you don't have a colonoscopy. If you're female, mammograms. Mammograms. Okay? Mammograms should are, are moving forward earlier and earlier because in my lifetime as a physician, when I was in medical school and in and residency, breast cancer was very rare. Now, breast cancer is going to occur in about one in seven women over their lifetime, and it's going to kill up to one in nine women. It's a very, it's probably the second commonest after cardiovascular disease killer of women. Hey, boys. <laughs> we don't use our finger anymore. But you know what I'm talking about here. Prostate exams. PSAs. We do that all the time. PSAs are screening tests. Prostate ultrasounds. Prostate MRIs. Very aggressive about managing prostate disease. Why? Because it's so common. There are two diseases that most family doctors never screen for. And I screen for them routinely. And this is a travesty. Travesty. The first one, rising rates of cancer, but also very high disease entities, H. pylori. It's a bacteria that lives in the stomach and there's a very simple little you blow into a bag and you can test for H. pylori and you can kill it. Google it. Read up about H. pylori. This video is not about H. pylori. But every family doctor should be screening their new patients for H. pylori, in my opinion, and treating it where it's positive. But the big one, the big one that really angers me more than anything else, because if we did this one test, this one single test, this one single test early enough, we can reduce heart attack and stroke risk by over 50%. But what do we focus on? All these emergency responses, all these cath labs, all these, when people are sitting in the ER clutching their chest because they've had a heart attack or their, their, their lip is drooping and their arm is down because they've had a stroke. Too late. You could potentially salvage that. You might survive. 
But too late, you've had the event. You've had heart muscle and brain tissue dying. Is there a test we can do to pick up your risk early? And then is there something we can do to reduce that risk? Or maybe two things we can do. Absolutely there is. And yet most family practice doctors are defiantly not doing this. They're assuming somebody has the disease and putting them on a noxious drug called a statin that has no effect, does not reduce the risk of a heart attack or a stroke. The Danish type 2 paper that came out in October of last year, published in the College of Cardiology, showed that if you have diabetes, if you have a new diagnosis of diabetes, the average age of your first heart attack, your first stroke, or death by heart attack or stroke, where 5% of that population has a heart attack or a stroke or dies of a heart attack or a stroke, if you're male and diabetic, that age is, shout out a number, 43. 43 years of age. I'll be 43 next year. <laughs> Maybe not. But 43. If you don't have diabetes, if your A1C is below 6.5, you may not be out the woods yet, but that average age for males is 55. I'll be 55 in 12 years' time. 55. Now, 55 for me is back there somewhere, folks. 43 and 55, 5% of people, 5%, 1 in 20 people are going to have a heart attack or a stroke if you have diabetes at those pathetically young ages. And actually, 43, 43 if you have diabetes, 55 if you don't. In females, it's a little bit older. It's 51 for the diabetics and 61 for the non-diabetics. Still pathetically young. That's the risk. Very, very young age. This is not an old per person's disease. This is a young middle-aged disease. That's when you're having a heart attack. The disease can be picked up much earlier. So why the hell are we not screening for this disease? Why are we doing all these other esoteric screening tests that are important, but why do we not screen for the biggest killer of Americans? Very simple test. Very, very simple test. And somewhere between $99 and $300, California, it's around $300. Here in Florida, it's $99, up to about $110. Pay for the test yourself because your darn insurance companies won't pay for it and your doctor is not going to order it. And we do it every time you walk into this office for the first time or you Zoom in or have a phone call with me. We will order this test for you the very first time we meet you, because you are coming to see me because of your metabolic health, you don't want to die of a heart attack or a stroke. What's the test? It's a non-contrast CT scan of your chest called a coronary artery calcium score, CAC score. And to my mind, every single patient over the age of 40 especially, especially, especially if you are asymptomatic, if you have no chest symptoms, should get this test. And there's two reasons. Number one, if your score is zero or close to zero, and I use under 80 as my zero, depending on your age, if your score is a zero, no matter what your LDL, no matter what your cholesterol, no matter what your lipid levels are, it just doesn't matter. You do not have the disease that they're trying to treat with their statins. So it's malpractice. It is malpractice to put somebody on a statin without first getting a CAC score. And if the CAC score is low or zero, it is malpractice, malpractice to put them on a statin because of the side effects of statin. I said that you can quote me any day of the week, any day of the week. If they have metabolic dysfunction, use a GLP-1, use a dietary change, but don't put them on a statin. If your score is high, if your score is high, that requires action. If your CAC score is high, that requires action. That requires, in my opinion, and the opinion of Art Agatson, who created the CAC score, it's called the Agatson score, get a nuclear medicine stress test. You can get an echo. Often the cardiologist will do that. Get a referral to a cardiologist. Get a study to see where the blood flow to your heart muscle is compromised by that plaque. And I use a threshold of 80. Why do I use 80? Because I've had three patients have a critical stenosis with a CAC score of 80 in a single vessel, the LAD, and requiring stents to save their life. Young, 48 was my youngest. He's now 60 and doing great. 
His father died at 56. Just an anecdote. So get the CAC score. If you're below 80, no statin. If you're above 80, take the baby aspirin immediately. Or if you're worried you're above 80, if you're diabetic, take the baby aspirin. It's your best. It's the most effective, not perfect, but the most effective low-dose drug to prevent a clot or to, to reduce that plot, to reduce that clot from propagating. However, get a nuclear medicine stress test or possibly an exercise stress test. And if that's positive, if that shows ischemia, even if you're not symptomatic, you get a cath and if the stent is required, you get the stent. That's the algorithm. If you had stents, if you had previous disease, a CT angiogram with FFR is the right way to go. So why am I, why am I angry? Why am I really pissed off? I'm going to read something to you. Okay, because this is the standard of healthcare. Actually, it's not healthcare, it's the health profit industry, isn't it? But this is the standard of care. Okay, so I get a letter from a new patient that I've had. She's out in California, female, at risk, at risk, at risk. Okay, and I prescribe the CAC score, but because she's with Kaiser, she has to get this from her Kaiser family doctor. So she writes to us, she says, I had a hard time finding the lab to take my test. I contacted my treating doctor at Kaiser, brackets, ha, 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 close brackets, and requested a referral. I even confirmed with my doctor in my request that I understand it will not be covered by standard insurance and I am willing to pay for it myself. I received her answer, here it is. Hi, Ms. X, hi, Ms. Patient. Cardiac CT scanning for coronary artery calcium score is not used for routine screening in asymptomatic situation. The calcium score itself doesn't have much clinical meaning. I am sorry, I cannot order it for screening. On exact, the very next email, the very next email, she, by the way, went out and got another practitioner to get her that score. The very next patient I had, exactly the same situation. Doctor refused to get a CAC score. Patient's diabetic, patient's in his early 50, late 40s, I think, early 50, either 49 or 50 or 51, young. He emails me, male patient, emails me. Now, he's been seen by his, by his endocrinologist, by his family doctor forever with his diabetes. They put him on a CoQ10, they want him on a statin, blah, blah, blah. He emails me, thank you so much for saving my life. Your recommendation against the better judgment of my own doctor for a CAC test led to a cardiovascular evaluation in today's catheterization. It showed these blockages, left main 50%, LAD 90%, left circumflex 90%, obtuse marginal 90%, RCA 90% blocked. I was immediately admitted to the hospital for open heart surgery tomorrow. No chest pain. Asymptomatic patient. PCP refused to do a CAC score. That guy would have either been dead, probably dead, or sitting in the ER clutching his chest, having had his heart attack, dead muscle, unretrievable, Here's another one. And I, and I I don't like what this guy said, but it's so sad that he had to say this. Dr. Sivas, I am no longer listening to my PCP. I am not following their orders. I am only following you. It is just surprising that someone involved in healthcare is so ignorant. I have a high calcium score that you got obtained and all they want to do is prescribe statins. Now, this is somebody who I got the CAC score with. Their PCP, 60 years old, PCP did not want to do the CAC score. And then when he came back to his PCP and said, hey, my CAC score is elevated, what did they say? Oh, you need statins. So he turned back to me and said, I got my PCP, by the way, someone who I've known for 30 years to try to order me the test, and they wouldn't. 
in fighting with them. My PCP said this, I have ordered your myocardial perfusion scan, but keep in mind, with you not having any chest pain, this test is likely to be normal, and you may need further testing and statins based on your high calcium score. Take care. And this patient ad libs, take care is another way of saying F you. <laughs> so, and he says, I'm now searching for a PCP who is at least tolerant of a ketogenic diet and understands cardiovascular disease. Isn't that sad, folks? Isn't that sad that I've got emails here for a simple, simple study, simple non-contrast CD scan, very little radiation, nothing involved, to screen for the commonest cause of death, the commonest cause of preventable death. They'll do the colonoscopy all day long. They'll do the uh, MRI, the ultrasound of the prostate. They'll do the uh, mammogram all day long with marginal yields, according to Zoe Harkin. Read her Monday letter. But the best screen for early cardiovascular disease, not the perfect test, but the best screen for cardiovascular disease as a call to action, the CAC score, simple to get, these PCPs are putting themselves and certainly their patients at risk. Because if my PCP says to me, I'm not going to get this test because you're asymptomatic, and I go and get it done, and I've got the kind of blockages, those 90% blockages that my patient had. It's America, folks. It's more lawyers than, than doctors in this, count, in this state, in this country, certainly in Florida, three to one. I'm not, I'm not saying legal action. But how do we get PCPs at the age of 40 to order a routine CAC score? Then you've got a baseline, even if it's zero. You've got a baseline, no statin. Let's track it. And if it's a zero, we'll get another one in 7 to 10 years' time. Art Agatson says 10 years, depending on your age. And if it's positive, we'll track it. We'll get the testing done. If you're clear, we'll keep watching it. So we can be ahead of your heart attack or a stroke. You know what, folks? I said at the beginning of this that I was angry. I'm just shaking my head in deep, deep, deep dismay and disappointment at our healthcare system. They just don't understand. Who, who educates these people? Not medical schools. Not medical schools. Who creates best practices? Best practices. Statin, statin, statin. If you've got a pulse, take a statin. This is the College of Cardiology. Cardiologists should be promoting this. They understand it. They know it. They understand the connection to diabetes, not to lipids. And they refuse to hear. It's just prescribe a statin. I am a carb addiction doc. Please get your CAC score done. And if you can't get it done, we'll order it for you. Anywhere in the United States, I'll write you the script. Because your life matters. Your life matters. And if you don't know whether you should take a statin or not, let's get a CAC score. Let's discuss it. 561-517-0642. If you like this rant, please support us. I'm doing these videos for free in the middle of the night with James. Throw a buck or two at us. You'll see our PayPal account in the, in the show notes. Uh, you'll see our Patreon account. Support us so we can keep this content coming. 561-517-0642.